Hello, fellow gamers, and thank you for listening to the Multiplayer Gaming Podcast. We are three dads who are lifelong gamers, and on Thursdays like today, we break down recent gaming news that we found the most interesting. Please make sure to follow us on socials at Multiplayer Pod, and please rate our show five stars and leave a written review in your podcast app. Also, if you like what we do here and want to help tip one of your favorite shows, come check out our Patreon page. We will forever be thankful, and you'll get two bonus Squadcast episodes every month. You can sign up at MultiplayerSquad.com. I am your host, Paul, and joining me, he was almost too busy to record with us because he's too busy sending death threats and hateful DMs to gaming critics that he disagrees with. It's Josh. Oh, I was hoping that was going to be me. (laughs) I was like, that can't be Michael. Michael's too nice. Uh, Fun fact, I have never death threaded anybody. Mm, Good. I'm proud of you, Josh. You're you're better than some of our gamer uh, brethren out there. It's true. I may may occasionally tell somebody to uninstall a video game, but I have never death threaded anyone. (laughs) Oh, boy. And joining me and Josh, he's slowly walking around Hogwarts, mesmerized at the very nice bedside tables of the Hufflepuff dorm rooms. It's Michael. None of this is factual whatsoever. <laughs> and in fact, I'm going to take this moment to not talk about that. I'm just going to say, hey, guys, whatever you're doing right now, please go over to Twitter and follow us on there. It really helps us out. There we go. I'm going to use my intro time to do that. All right. So the first news story that we're going to talk about this week is all about Harry Potter Hogwarts Legacy. We got a showcase courtesy of developer Avalanche Software and Hogwarts Legacy is coming up on us, guys. It is slated for release on February 10th. And we got a total of about 45 minutes of the showcase. A lot of it was highlighting the Hufflepuff dorm rooms and the common rooms. We got a little bit of a preview of how combat works in this game. I know that's one thing, especially Josh and I had been waiting to see, because we really did not know how the combat was going to work. So let me just throw things to you guys. What did you think about this showcase? All right. Number one, House Hufflepuff here, by the way. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I always assumed I would be Slytherin and everybody that knows me was like, Josh, you are 100% Slytherin. And then I took the test and I'm Hufflepuff. Mm, so, nice. I, you know, I felt a kindred. Uh, I felt at home in this video when they showed off the beautiful Hufflepuff. Uh, what is it? House? Yep. And, and so many badgers. Badgers everywhere. Dude, badgers are awesome, by <laughs> uh, the way. Yes. Uh, Learn I like to your all small the animals. You know, sure. it's, uh, yeah, I felt very at home uh, until I realized the graphics look bad for a <laughs> game in 2023. Just the graphics looked bad, Josh? I mean, uh, how, how, <laughs> how deep are we getting right do away? We, <laughs> did, did, did we all hate this? <laughs> Let's just get it out of the way. I, I thought this was all pretty <sighs> atrocious. Okay, I didn't. I didn't hate it, but it it did not tickle my fancy a whole lot either, guys. I'm I'm so happy that that this is the response. So I, I'm gonna go ahead and upset a lot of people right now. I care less about Harry Potter. I've always cared less about Harry Potter. I think it's kind of an overrated franchise. And I know when it took the world by storm a decade ago or whatever it was, everyone was like, "Yeah, Harry Potter." I just don't care. And so now I've got to watch this video game and we're probably going to play this video game. Oh, we're probably going to play. And we're going to review this video <laughs> Good game. Good chance. <laughs> and I do not care about this video game, not even a little bit. So let me just say, okay, I'm going to start with the combat cuz we watched the combat. Like, okay, so they're talking in this combat video um and by the way, I could spend the whole 30 minutes of this episode complaining about this, so just stop me when I've gone too long. But I'll just, You have 14 seconds left, Mike. Then I'll go with combat <laughs> real fast. Like They're like, oh, you know, the little colors for damage and stuff. Like We get it. Alteration, divination, conjuration, evocation. We have all that stuff. It looks like they're just casting magic missile the whole time at range targets. I don't see anything that's super exciting about the combat. Um, there's a white outline around everyone. Looks like, I don't know, like Dark Ages of Camelot circa 2001. Granted, the graphics are better than that, but that's the combat I got like meh i i thought the combat actually looked like the best part of the video to be honest (laughs) um i mean other than appreciating furniture and windows which they really were proud of their furniture and windows they were here here's part of the thing if you're a massive harry potter fan then there are some very cool things that stand out in this like they did point out that the wood is honey colored because that's what it mentions in the books and that the windows are the winter windows and they change in the summer and stuff like that Uh, you know that's all neat stuff but when it comes to a video game 
you're not going to notice any of that. How many people are going to sit there and slowly walk around and look at every detail in every room in this? It, like, that's not a video game at that point. I, th- a couple things, because I know we can't spend forever on this and I don't want to get too far in the weeds in this. I thought the combat looked fine. I like that they said, hey, there's a lot of different combinations to this system. I like that the, you know, the, you've got different like trigger uh, hotkeys that will then change the four spells that you can cast at any time. I like that there's combos. It seems like a fleshed out system. I agree with you, Michael. It does look very similar in that you're just like shooting wisps of light or something like that. Magic missiles. Yeah. It's the same yeah, in the mag- movies, right? They all, every spell looks the same. You just get yeah. the little trail going through the air. My biggest complaint with the combat was that they showed Accio and Leviosa. Those right? are things. And then, um, they both looked exactly the same to me. I couldn't tell what the difference was. In those. Oh, the- well, yeah. I mean, like, you know, Leviosa makes them float in the air. Yeah, and then so Accio, Accio is what pulls it towards them. So you see a couple combos where they'll levitate someone in the air and then pull them closer and then start doing more moves. But I, I think the main thing here is the combat in this game is not going to be difficult. This is a casual game that's going to serve as a Hogwarts simulator. You're not going to play this game for big boss fights. It's not going to be challenging or anything like that. This is going to be for people who want an experience of living at Hogwarts. I think if you can wrap your head around that kind of expectation, it'll be more enjoyable. It's not going to be a traditional video game. It's made for casual gamers who love Harry Potter. Mm. I was hoping for like a discovery thing, like explore Hogwarts, find this door that you don't know where it leads to, you know, and behind that door is some crazy magical room the chamber of secrets you know sure, or the dungeon where there's like, a maybe. Of the dungeon. <laughs> right? maybe it'll you know have or some that stuff like if that does that's cool like that i like that aspect of it of like looking around and finding neat off the beaten path type things and secrets and stuff like that i'm with you i think my expectation of this game has changed since the video i i'm not super excited but i'm not as blasé as michael is i i like harry potter like i'm not crazy about harry potter but i definitely enjoy harry potter oh uh, yeah. see i'm crazy about harry potter and i think this game has zero interest for what I look for in gaming. I, I, I will say that this showcase had the best ever hype man. Everything they oh. showed, this guy thought was incredible. I, they, I, I, I literally wrote down a couple instances. They literally tell you about a field guide and they, they're like, all right, so let's go ahead and pull up the field guide, which on the front has the animal of your house. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. And if you I, click on challenges, you can see the challenges you can do. Wow. And and in the character creation, it's it's a it's a very well done character creation system. But even the guy was like, you can add moles and freckles. You guys thought of everything. And I was like, has this guy never played a video game? Because <laughs> yeah. this is all very run of the mill stuff. I saw nothing in here that seemed incredible or new or innovative. It's just it's going to be a casual Harry Potter game. I, I'm so happy you mentioned that. That's the second thing I had on my notes to kind of gripe about was just talking <laughs> about the way the video was made and, and, and constructed in general. Like, you know, we've seen a lot of this where people sit and they talk about their video game. It was nice to see gameplay next to them. You know, not like Skull and Bones where we're just watching people talk about it. We're watching the gameplay. But, man, that guy, everything. I'm like, why is everything so exciting? So they talk about the book, the the school book you get, which basically... All it is is an all-in-one menu guide. It shows you your challenges. You can probably look at your skill points and your map and stuff boy. like that. Yeah. But this guy acted like it was the most innovative thing that's ever happened in gaming. And I'm like... <laughs> or in <"Dude>, life. <laughs> like, why? Yeah, yeah. Why? Like, everything was exciting for him. Wow. I'm like, this is not... like I'm kind of jealous book. of that guy, man. Like, like yeah. He, how, he looked like he was having fun. <laughs> how I, blissful. I wanted, I wanted to like the game that much, too. Me, too. I... I I think, uh, Paul, I think you said it right. This is going to be a Hogwarts simulator. I think if people approach it like that, then they're probably going to find some some entertainment and enjoyment in this game. I thought it was going to be this grand epic adventure set in the Harry Potter universe and at Hogwarts. Maybe it's still that. I am a little put off by they really... Maybe it was just the video player. I maybe I Maybe it was the demo. But am I the only one that thought that they really dumbed down the graphics on this? Like since like what we very first saw initially to like what they showed now, because this game's not that far away and these graphics were not good, man. 
I, I don't know. I, the funniest thing is the one thing that I took away from it was I thought the graphics were actually pretty good. Really? But I was oh, mostly but... looking at like Hogwarts in general, like the textures on the walls, the Everything staircases, stuff like that. I thought it looked good. Yeah. But yeah, but I don't know. I they, maybe maybe I'm just I've got 2014 on the brain. And I'm just like these graphics are amazing. That's it. I'm the hype guy, but for <laughs> graphics, graphics could be okay at best. And I'd be like, wow, these are so good. Did you guys think that the colors all just seemed so muted? The That's color right. saturation seemed really off to me. Everything had like a tinge of brown and like dark yep. yellow to it. That's exactly yeah. what I mean. It, I'm not talking like polygon counts or like it just I felt like the characters were were fairly muted. All the colors were muted for I mean, Hogwarts is supposed to be this like vibrant, incredible magical place and everything just looked kind of dull to me so. just to make the spells stand out more because they're purple and pink and stuff <laughs> maybe <laughs> yeah yeah i really wanted to see like the great hall with all the floating candles and you've got all these delicious looking foods or something and you never really got that it was just let's casually walk around hogwarts and sure there's a little couple things happening here or there in the hallways but I thought that the colors looked very, very, the color saturation just seemed way off on the sliders. And I just feel like uh, it, they talk about walking around and discovering mysteries of Hogwarts. All we saw here was walking around and casting a spell to grab a piece of paper floating in the air and you add it to your journal. And one girl sends you out to go find some game pieces and another person tells you to go walk around and find some keys. It almost seemed like a glorified, like, hide and seek with all these different items around the castle. I don't know if we're going to get those big bad monsters hiding in the hallways or something, but I do hope that they add a little bit of it. I think this game is is just not going to be up our alley. I'm afraid this is the kind of game that's got murder written all over it. Ooh. Last last thing I'll complain about, the dialogue. Like the mouth animations, that was actually pretty poor. They looked like animatronic like Chuck E. Cheese robots yeah. talking. <laughs> uh, it, it, it does not look next gen at all. Let's yeah. just say that. I guess that's a good takeaway is like, there's not much that impressed me about what we saw. And I, I think it's supposed to be impressive at this point and it just wasn't. So no. I am a little disappointed. My hype is not completely gone. I think there's things that can redeem this game, but I'll be honest from what they showed did the opposite for me. I, I'm going to compare this to a meme that I saw a few days ago and it was basically like five different known pop culture bad guys at the top of it was emperor palpatine from star wars and it basically said you know took over the known universe with his intergalactic empire for over 30 years in the middle was sauron who almost took over all of middle earth but threatened it very well at the very bottom is lord voldemort tried to take over a kid's school and failed <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's it oh goodness all right well let's go ahead and take a short break and we'll be right back with more multiplayer gaming podcast Okay, the next news story here that we wanted to cover is an article that we found from PushSquare.com. Now, of course, as everyone now knows, God of War Ragnarok has released. It is currently on the schedule as our next deep dive. And for the most part, the game has received fantastic reviews all around, pretty much seeing 9s and 10s out of 10, pretty much from almost all publications. Well, there was a reviewer who wrote for IGN Korea named Bai Sang Hyun, who gave this game a 6 out of 10. Now, by any chance, did you guys like read much about what his review said? Do you guys know why he rated the game a 6 out of 10? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I was going to say, I tried to read it. You have to translate the page because it is written in Korean. Um, the biggest takeaway that I got, if I was reading it correctly and the translation was correct... Was he basically just said, this is just more of the same. There's really no innovation. Yeah. God of War 2018 was extremely innovative. It was the rebirth of the series. It was incredible when it came out with how they approached things. And he felt like they could have done that with Ragnarok, but it was really just more of the same. It was almost like a glorified DLC because it's just more God of War at that point. So he was saying, I, I was hoping for more. I didn't get that. It's just more of the same. Six out of ten. Yeah, yeah. It it's exactly what I saw. It's nothing original. It's kind of like how Chevy ran the same exact looking truck from like for like 12 years. That's how I compare it. If you have the best thing in the industry, why are you going to try and reinnovate? Why not just put another game for us to enjoy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's one of the hard things. Like that's one thing I didn't really consider because I kind of said I, I guarantee Ragnarok is going to win game of the year. I said that, I don't know, like two weeks ago. But it is very hard to follow up one of the greatest games ever. And that's also what the reviewer said. He said, 
I love 2018 God of War. He said it's arguably the best game of the century. And so when Ragnarok came out, he largely just saw the same combat with just some minor changes. And he said that like all the characters have a very similar story. Everyone's dealing with family drama. And so it just kind of felt like, well, that's already also the storylines in the first one. So we just kind of have you know similar stories. It's the same combat. We're going to a lot of the same realms as before. And he is an indie game developer. I don't know if you guys know that. And so did, he yeah. said no, that he he really puts a premium on innovation and author's voice and creativity. And he said that he just kind of feels like this was riding the coattails of 2018 God of War because that's so good. Well, let's just go ahead and pump out more of the same. So, you know, oh, I, and, okay. and, and, and you know what, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't disagree with anything in his review. Like no. now, whether or not that still means it's a 10 out of 10, or if it drops it to a six out of 10 is, I guess, up to each individual person, but none of that is incorrect. Like combat is 99% the same. Yeah. Now you can double tap L1 and you can do a shield bash. And there's, I mean, that's really like about the only difference, but you know, he did say it's kind of formulaic. You do combat. Dialogue, puzzle, cinematic. Combat, dialogue, puzzle, cinematic. And that is true, but that's also what The Last God of War did. But the real problem here is that he did share screenshots of DMs that he's getting from people on Twitter. Uh, It contains a lot of language we can't read because we are a family-friendly show. But let's just say it includes things like, I'm gonna kill you. And it has a lot of nasty comments about his physical appearance uh, which really seems unfair and has nothing to do with anything. Why do you guys think gamers feel so offended when they didn't even make the game and they hadn't even played it yet? Like, why are they lashing out so much? Well, I mean, first of all, the internet is a forum for angry people to argue with each other and talk about people's cats. That's all it really is. Yeah. <laughs> and so, like, you don't see a lot of positive. And when you go against the grain, like, I don't agree with his... 6 out of 10. I agree with a lot of what he said in his review, but this is not an, a, a scale based on how innovative the game was. If you gave the first one a 10 out of 10, and you said this was basically the same, why would this not be at least like a 9 out of 10? So maybe it just kind of rubbed people the wrong way that he was kind of going a little too far into that direction. But again, you see the worst of all people online, especially in social media, so I'm not surprised about this. It's nasty, it's wrong, but I'm, I'm not surprised. Here's the thing. Everybody's different, man. And this is honestly one of the things that I love about our show, right? Is we disagree on what uh, kind of games we like a lot. And I mean, there's a reason that there's three of us. There's a reason that we all three of us review a game. We don't just say, hey, I'm going to review this one. Michael, you review that one. Paul, you review that one. Um, I I don't know why people get so upset. That's Mm -hmm. the thing that I have a hard time like trying to comprehend. I can actually comprehend that God of War is not for everybody. There are probably people out there that go, this game sucks. Yeah. That's okay. I think you're crazy, but that's okay at that point, you know, because there's games that I'd say, I I like this game. And people go, that game's terrible. Like we've said that to each other. Yeah. You know, so like, it's good to disagree on things. It's bad to start threatening people for an opinion. And that's where this has gotten really out of hand. And and honestly, I'm kind of ashamed for these people that use the anonymity of the internet to behave this way. Because that's just that's one of the things that's wrong with gaming in general, right? Like, well, I, I mean, I pick on people in video games, but I'm not death threatening people. I'm not wishing cancer upon people and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like, it's just we got to do better as gamers to just remember that there are people on the other end of that machine or that game that you're playing. Well, and the thing is, is that this is a reviewer. This is a critic. His job is to give his honest opinion, and he did. And he wasn't wrong about a lot of the things he said. Maybe the score is a little bit lower than I would think it is. But to sit here and treat a human being this nastily, I mean, everything, everything's there. Racial slurs, um, you know, just attacks on his person, his character, when really he's just doing his job. Like, and he's, he's, he's being honest, which is what you want from a critic. It's better than him just saying, hey, I pocketed $6,000 from the studio to give a positive review. No, he's doing his job <laughs> to give a, a real review, and we're pissed at him. It's, it's a shame. It's shameful. And, and he, for, for the record, he seems like a really great guy. Like yeah. He goes to yeah. Twitter, and he posts all these things. He even apologized where he's like, 
Look, I I apologize if anyone out there thinks that I'm making God of War enthusiasts look bad. I I I don't. That's not what I intended, you know. And he goes on to say over and over, I love 2018 God of War. I love the series. It's just when you value creativity and innovation, I didn't totally see that in this game because it's more of the same. Um, you know, it, and 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 also the last thing I want to say about it is that he did say that these kinds of critical reviews are good for gamers in the long run because if all we did is worship at the feet of santa monica studios then they're just going to keep pumping out the same game over and over there has to be a certain level of accountability and he said that Corey, um what's his name Corey Bal- barlog, barlog the creative director even said when he made the 2018 god of war that he did go back and read the reviews of the original god of war games read the criticisms and took those things to heart and tried to make the best game possible and probably made, you know, the most acclaimed game of the 2020s or I guess the, the late 2010s in that regard. Uh, so I think he's absolutely right. There's nothing wrong with pointing out a few flaws. No game is perfect. Every game's got a couple things you can nitpick. Maybe his six rating was a little low, but if you read the actual content of the review, I, I thought it was a really interesting read and I think it's totally fair. People need to learn to just, if you disagree with somebody, just, dis- dis- it's okay. It, like, you don't have to fight that, you know? Like, this guy's entitled to his opinion. It's good to have differences of opinion. It's good to have that other viewpoint. Like, hey, why don't you like this game? I, it's crazy because I think it's one of the best games ever. Why don't you like it? Okay, valid point, you yeah. know, yeah. as far as that. I, and I don't and the, whole, the whole point on how disagreeing is healthy, especially from a critique standpoint, is a very good thing because if not God of War three, whatever it's going to be called, God of War Stovokor or something like that, um, it's it's <laughs> God probably, of War three two. <laughs> yeah, it would be the same thing. So it's good to see someone out there saying, "Hey, you know, we kind of want something different with the third one." Yeah. All right. We also got some news this week regarding Diablo four, which I think all of us would say is pretty darn close to the top of our most anticipated games. Approved. We <laughs> we learned that a fancy new trailer has already been made and it is going to air at the Game Awards this December. And it appears that Blizzard is shooting for an April 2023 release and that we will be having open beta coming in February. We did also read that the game is going to embrace the games as a service model, which I do know is kind of a dirty word these days. A lot of gamers don't like that. But when you have a game world as big and as expansive as Diablo, I don't think that's really a surprise. I think most of us kind of already knew that. Um, But guys, Diablo might only be five months away. That's not that far. I'll take it. Yeah, I'm so I'm so ready for a good, solid multiplayer game that we can all hop into. You know, that's the one thing that I feel like we've had our hopes up with a couple games that just haven't panned out. I miss just playing with four or five friends, man. You know, I really do. I I hop in Overwatch 2. I'm not even really... I I don't know that I love Overwatch 2, but it's the only multiplayer game that you can play with more than like one or two other people at this point. That's, That's a decent game. And so Diablo 4... I think I'm very excited for it being a good game that people can hop into and play together and just have a good time. Yeah, I I built my first PC to do a LAN party for Diablo 2. Diablo 2, or all Diablo games, are games that are best enjoyed. I think we can all agree on this. It's much, much better in multiplayer. Playing it by yourself is fun, but it's really kind of like Marvel Ultimate Alliance where you just do that three-quarter view, smash things. As, As a group, it's a riot. It's so much fun. Can't wait for this. I love seeing games that are designed to be enjoyed more as a group. And so this is, to say that it's five months away, exceptional exciting yeah i don't know about you guys i'm not one to want to play diablo for months and months on end i love playing through the campaign i might do it twice and bump up the difficulty i'm Mm. not going to go all the way through whatever they call the highest level like hell difficulty or whatever i'll play it on regular and then hard and then i kind of feel good about it so i'll pay full price for the game i don't plan on paying for any expanded content down the road but I'm absolutely excited to be able to have another chapter of Diablo to play. The cinematics are always fun and the storylines. Sometimes Story you just want to play a good beat em up action yeah. RPG. Yeah. Yep. I, I, the mindlessness of it with friends is something that's I'm really looking forward to. 
you yeah. know um let's just hope the game is good i think it's gonna be from what they've shown off it seems well i like the open world aspect of it i mean there's there's a lot going on i'm actually really curious to see this video that's coming out next month to see what they show off with it yeah, yeah i'm excited I'm sure. about it i i think that, that the biggest thing is that diablo is is one of the franchises that i buy on every single um, platform that I have. I'll own it on PlayStation. I'll own it on PC just because I like playing with so many different people. And if my friends are like, hey, we're playing it on PlayStation, I'll play it. Other friends are playing on PC. Like, it's it's fun to go through it a few times, but I'm like you, Paul. I'll drop it after a few months. Yeah. All right. And then our last story of the week, Larian Studios. They Ooh. are the developer of Baldur's Gate 3 and uh, podcast favorite, Divinity Original Sin 2. They announced that they're going to be hosting a stream next month where they will finally give us a release date on Baldur's Gate 3. It is also going to coincide with the launch of Patch 9. We don't know when it'll be yet, but it will be sometime next year in 2023. And for any listeners who thought that this game already released a long time ago, your confusion is forgiven because Act 1 of Baldur's Gate 3 Released over two years ago, it released in October 2020. They are just now playtesting Acts 2 and 3, which will be part of the full release. Uh, I don't know why they decided to go with this model. I think this is a little bit strange that you had more than two years to play Act 1, but sometime next year, we're finally going to, going to get the rest of the game. I'll I tell think- you why they... Oh. I I just think it's I think it's a it's a bonkers concept because like I I think there'd be some fatigue like okay I played through it two years ago but now I'm looking forward to the second <laughs> yeah. part I might forget about it and not play it I don't know go ahead Josh I'll tell Sorry. you why they did this model because this game is going to be so complex and so in depth that basically chapter one is nothing but a gigantic beta play test. Um, I've been following Baldur's Gate 3 for quite some time now, actually. Um, Larian Studios makes one of my favorite RPGs ever. You guys have heard us talk about it, Divinity Original Sin 2. Absolutely incredible. The systems in that game are phenomenal. They're going even more all out with Baldur's Gate 3. They've said it. I love the fact that this is straight up Dungeons and Dragons as well. Um, because Divinity Original Sin was its own world, its own lore and stuff like that. But I'm a huge fan of Dungeons and Dragons. To have a game that's made by Larian Studios who knows how to do it and give you the choice on how you want to approach something, make a Dungeons and Dragons game under the Baldur's Gate. Mind you, the Baldur's Gate series is one of the most beloved role-playing game series in gaming. Um, and so they know what they're tackling. I have every faith in the world that they're going to do it. But chapter one or act one being available for the last two or three years has been so that they can test things. They can work out the bugs. They can find what works, what doesn't work. I remember looking into this, I, I honestly, about a year ago, because I really wanted to pick up the early access to play it. And the one complaint was, this is very buggy. We don't feel like this game's ready yet. And Larian said, yeah, no duh. Like we're still two <laughs> years out, man. And so take the time that they need. 2023 does seem like it's going to be the release day. I could, I don't care at this point when it releases because when it does, I'm going to be so excited for this game. It's going to be ridiculous. So Josh, you just said you followed this game a lot. Tell me something. I got a question for you. What do you think they're going to do in Baldur's Gate 3 since uh, Kratos and Atreus killed Baldur in 2018? Yeah, different timelines. This is Dragonlance. Um, this is I the mean, multiverse, you've got, Michael. You've got All mind right. flayers. The, the 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 intro that they show off has uh, mind flayers, just like putting mind so flayer worms down. and taking over people. It's it's amazing, man. I cannot wait. <laughs> oh boy, yeah. You know, I I love Larian Studios. I love the Baldur's Gate series. I think this is just kind of funny. If you want to do a a, a two year long beta, then that's fine. You know, I guess. But don't put it out in early release. Just well, call it alpha cheaper. or call it beta. But but see, here's the thing. Because these people... I mean, Act 1 is over 20 hours long, by the way. So if you pre-order, you get this early access. You're getting a 20-hour game. But you get it for the pre-release price. It's going to be 60 bucks. I don't know what it is right now. I think it's $39.99. It's 60 is It's 60 right now? Yeah, okay, it's always well, it didn't 60. used to be. And I think it was a little cheaper, but I could be wrong. Yeah, you might be. I'm not entirely sure. I do know it's 60 right now because I did check earlier today because you would think you would get a nice healthy discount buying it two years early where you're just helping fund the development. Do you guys know the struggle (laughs) that I have gone through to not buy this and play Act 1? Like, I'm really proud of myself, waiting. guys. I'm really, really proud of myself on this because I have looked at it many, many times and gone like, dude, that'd be so fun to just play Act 1. It's 20 hours long. It's basically a full game. Come on. I think and then I go, nope. 
if we didn't have this podcast to keep you busy, you would have done it already. Oh, yeah. I just, he definitely would have. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> I'm not that strong, guys. Maybe. <laughs> I, I would think down the road at some point we'll probably deep dive it. But this is one of those games where we might have to just do the deep dive six weeks after release because it's going to take so long oh, to go through huge. the content. Yeah. 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 It's a big game. All right. Well, I think that covers everything we wanted to do here for this week. So thank you, everyone, for listening to This Week in Gaming. As always, we will have a quick take episode for you all on Saturday. And just as a reminder, come sign up on Patreon at MultiplayerSquad.com. We'd love to have you guys help support the show there. And you do get your money's worth. You're going to get two bonus episodes every month. Those episodes are 45 minutes long, plus or minus. And it has all three of us. They're an absolute blast. We would love to have you join us there as well. And I think that wraps everything up. So thanks again, once again, to everyone for listening. We'll see you all next time. Happy gaming. Cheers, all. All right. See you, everybody. I always wait for the pause, and then I'm like, I always, I always wait. I always wait for that.